What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Man Card, where we like to start off the podcast with a lovely quote of the week. Mr. Noah has it for us this week. Hit it with me. If you want to build the Iron Man suit, you're at Georgia Tech. You can do that. Tony Stark. Hit it. Welcome back, everybody, to my favorite podcast, your favorite podcast, and Noah's second favorite podcast. What's the first favorite podcast? I don't know. We'll find out that. Blah, 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 blah. Figure that out later. Sorry for my mumble jumble. That Anyways, was, that I'm, was I'm just, bad. I don't care if it was bad. We're going to keep it because I'm excited. <laughs> Dude, I love it. I love it. It's graduation season. We are done. I am done. You've been done for a while, but I have finished. I'm a little bit more in the spirit than you. You don't say. I, <laughs> My shirt says Georgia Tech. We're good. No, we're cool. yeah, we're both repping it. It's it's funny because on the way in, you were telling me exactly why you didn't have. Because I texted you, I was like, "Hey, you know, bring your cap and gown. It's gonna be it's gonna be a time, you know." Yeah. Well, I, w- I would have. Well, I but mean, I'm getting. Well, fill us in. What's going okay, on with so that? So Georgia Tech's screwing me again. Oh well, what's new? So about two weeks ago, I decided, you know, I got to order my cap and gown. Two weeks. Maybe two and a half weeks before graduation seems perfect. No issues. Order it. Say, ship it to my house. Put the order in. A week and a half goes by. And I check and see, hmm, yeah. It hasn't shipped yet. So this week, oh, I'm, I'm, a little, no. I'm a little worried. Graduation's a Saturday. It hasn't shipped yet. It still says pending. So I call Barnes & Noble because that's who does our cap and gown. And I'm like, hey, look, let's not ship it. Let me just come pick it up in the store. Will that be quicker? They said, oh, yeah, definitely. It'll definitely be quicker if you just come pick it up in the store. Send us an email at this email saying, hey, this is my order number. Don't ship it. Let me come pick it up. So I did that immediately. I did that, what, Monday? And I sent the email. Still pending at this point. So today I decided to go into the Barnes & Noble and pick up my cap and gown. I walk up to the desk. I'm like, hey, what's up? I'm graduating. Give me that cap and gown. Give give, Give me that drip. They don't have my drip. Well, okay. So here's my here's where my, I get a little lost in the story because you walk. You're you're currently in Barnes Noble. Correct. You're at the desk, Correct. that little stupid kiosk thing. Yes. And it's you, actually upstairs. That upstairs yeah, it's part. that yes. upstairs thing. And you're like, because you see other people getting caps and gowns. Oh yeah, they're picking them up. They're happy. They're smiling. Could you not place an order for a cap and gown at that table? So what I don't understand is why they could why they didn't recommend that to me. Why didn't they just say, "Hey, ca- let's cancel your go, order. Go tomorrow and do that." I, I might cancel because you're at tech, right? Well, the thing is, I feel like they would have done that if they had them just in stock, ready to go right there. Were but people, they were pulling them out of boxes, so it's almost like they ordered them okay. and brought them. I'll do that tomorrow. I'll call them. I'll be like, well, "Hey, look, can we up. just cancel my online order and let me just come pick it up in person?" So I'd love that. I just want the cap and gown. I'm freaking out a little. Well, that's bit. that's all I would want, dude. Yeah. I just don't want you to show up in your skivvies. To graduation and be like, well, this is the best I can pull together. I'm gonna do some. I'm walking across that stage. On Hell they Carrera, will, they will chase me. I don't care. Okay, so I was I was literally at work the other day, and I was thinking about graduation, and I was thinking of all of the people that I'm gonna see there because I actually I don't have social media. I don't have social media on my phone. I don't have Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter. I never had a Twitter, um, Facebook, nothing. Right, I haven't had that for like over a year. At, l- at least a year minimum. But I occasionally go on to make sure nobody is like DM'd me needing something from me. Because it's happened a couple times and I've missed it. So now I kind of regularly, at least once a week, go on and make sure that nobody's trying to get at me. So this time, of course, what season is it? It's, well, graduation season. So I go on there and I see photos of some people who I, you know, somebody that I used to know. Um, that's really bad. Uh, at tech, right? Mm-hmm. And some people that you know are uh, that I used to know that are now graduating. Yeah. And I graduated last year. But technically, I, yes. Uh, technically. But, but you're I, walking this but year. But I'm walking this year. So I'm like, well, shoot. I'm going to have to see these idiots again. You know what I mean? And I'm not going to name names. I'm not that kind of guy. Um, Brian. If you, yeah, Brian. Yeah, that's it. Screw you, Brian. Um, that's that's going to now be a running joke on the podcast. <laughs> Just screw you, Brian. You no, know, fuck Brian. Dude, honestly, get out of here, bro. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to have to 
go. And of course, you know, if I don't like somebody, oh shoot, I just pulled a U and hit the table. Um, I'm going to have to go and, and not let them know that I don't like them. Because most of the time, if, if you, if it's I don't like you. It's a good like thing this you, is going to get posted after graduation. Yeah, thank so goodness. that way they don't know. But like, I, I'm going to go and hopefully it goes well. Honestly, we'll, we'll probably do the man check for next Friday as like a, a grad ceremony check-in to see how it all went. Um, because I get to catch up with some of the people who I know for a fact really don't like me at all. And I didn't know they were graduating this semester. So I'm like, oh, uh, well, you know, whoops a daisy. Yeah, they have a split up into uh, different colleges and, you know, the, and businesses and whatever. What? Okay, granted, most they business ha- students liked me. They have a whole section of people that hate Noah sit here, please. Yes, there's like, yeah, it's a designated area. It's yeah. kind of like the ADA zone, except um, they're crippled by their hatred of me. Right, exactly. <laughs> Correct. Yeah, it's, it's kind of upsetting for them. I feel bad because um, I feel like most of the people, I don't know if you feel this, you know, about your enemies it's not enemies but like people who don't like you that you there was like a total whiff like you guys totally could have been friends oh yeah but, but it was like this nonsense. one thing yeah that just went wrong yeah and it's like they're the, either them or you couldn't get over yourselves to like pull you it like together being in the presence of people that don't like you um like, like is it one of the things that makes you nervous or awkward or weird or like because me personally i thrive like I, I sit there i love it i'm like god i, I know you hate me and i don't i really just don't it amps me up because so I had that feeling when I was in when I was at work I was just mulling through my brain in a dull moment of the day and I was thinking like man I'm going back to this school who has had some pretty draconian you know rules when it has come to this coronavirus thing so I'm like well should I get a mask that says this does nothing you know and wear it and or like should I like try to make a make a scene or whatever or like because mm-hmm. that's kind of my personality is like you know i'm there and you know i'm there should i do that or should i just show up under the radar you know, oh I... yeah with all that on mm-hmm. definitely under yeah the radar. right you're, you're definitely not flaunting nothing Let, let's just go through them real quick we okay. got the we got okay so for those of you that do not see us because you are listening and first of all go YouTube, to youtube yeah go to youtube go to youtube it, it'll just make things easier but i will describe it the best i can we got a gold yellow ribbon thing like a it's a it's a um stole these are called stole okay stole and it has the ramblin wreck on it why go on give us a little background yeah so this gold one is from my time with the ramblin wreck club um established 1930 um you know they're they're the caretakers of the ramblin wreck Uh, look at me i'm just slipping right back into my selling mode for the club um but they basically take care of the ramblin wreck they spend the most time of it out of all the students um, but the rec belongs to the students. That's why it's it's taken care of by a group of students. Um, now, granted, d- does this group of students, like every group of students, have its own issues because it's run by a group of students? Yes, of it course. very much so does. Um, I'm not going to get into it because it's not worth it. But um, let's you know, move on. We let's move yeah, on. Yeah, let's move on. We got uh, up good next, time. We, we got another white core, whatever word he said before. It's, it's another stool. ribbon. Stool. It's another not uh, hard. Uh, white stool. <laughs> You know what? This is a stool next to me. That that ain't no stool. I've seen a stool. So but it says student athlete, which I'm very confused. I was like, you know. Now, no. here's my thing is I don't <laughs> – we'll have to ask Parker because I don't know if I'm supposed to actually have this. Where'd you get it? So I got this from being on the cheer team. Oh, can you get me one? You, okay, well, that's the thing. So Can Parker get me one? I mean, yeah. You, he could let you wear his. No, I just – no, I want my own. Oh, okay, well. Hmm. What is Parker? What business? Or what school? No, no, no. What college is he? Business. Shit, no, I can't then. I need somebody that graduates oh. in the earlier one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, so this is from the cheer team. So it says student athlete on one side and you know has the little Georgia Tech insignia on the other, um, or logo. But I don't I never asked if I was supposed to have this. Who cares? Are they going are they going to check the, you? The cheer team super cares. Like there there were photos of a girl who quit like when you quit the cheer team, you don't you don't get like like you don't get regalia for like quitting like yeah. an organization that you were a part of and then you quit. Like it's like uh, if you were in Ramblin' Rec Club and you quit Rec well, you Club. Didn't quit, you didn't quit Mike Man and you were part of that team. You no, went to no, work no, out. No, correct. You were, but yeah. I'm but I wasn't an actual cheerleader and that's I think you're fine. I think you deserved it. Yeah. I mean, I definitely don't deserve it compared to the cheerleaders, but I appreciate them bringing me into that world and so this this really to me stands not as like I was a student athlete, but like like this was this was a really strong positive moment in my college career. So like I don't see it as like me posing as a student athlete. I see it as me like 
really appreciating all the people who are in that community. Um, this is just because it has a rainbow rock on it. I think it's cool. <laughs> but right. anyway, moving on. Let, let's get on to the controversial part of the pits. The one that kind of, I'm very proud of you. Let me just get that out right now. I'm very so, proud of you. I am personally dealing with no. a personal issue with those. Let's, let's make a strong distinction. I was in the business school. Uh, that, that, no, that, that I'm not worried. No. Yeah. Okay. I already told you my situation. The three, no, three, three, I, five thing. Yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah. All right. Did you tell it on the show? I don't know. You I may forget. have. I probably have. It's been an ongoing. Let me explain this and then you can explain. Go on, right ahead. So basically the chords are, um, it goes white for uh, graduating with honors. honors. Um, it's It goes gold and white for graduating with high honors. Correct. Um, and then it goes gold, white, and navy if you're graduating with the highest honors. Correct. So it's like, it's the same thing as like cum laude and then like. Well, plus, cum laude plus. Cum, cum laude, laude plus, plus, plus extra. <laughs> I don't even know the power levels of Me graduation, um, but sum, sum cum laude. <laughs> we look like so it's so idiots right now, um, but yeah. So so I graduated Georgia Tech with the highest honors, um, and now I attribute that mostly to I rub shoulders with really smart people like yourself. Obviously, I, I rub shoulders with smart people. I was not a smart person. No, I just listen. Y- you graduating and your your starting salary begs to differ, but I really love that I got cords and you got a salary. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> when you say it like that, it makes me a little less angry. Yeah. I wouldn't, my dude, I wouldn't be angry about it at all. Like, and I wouldn't want to switch roles either because <laughs> I like me too much to be you. Um, <laughs> let me just make it clear. I'm not upset that Noah has highest honors. I'm very happy. Noah no, cause he, honors. he knows where the smartness lies and that's with Mitchell. That's not, that's not true. Noah definitely 100% deserves it. Long story short, my situation is... That took you a second to come around. You had to like... You were like, no one deserves it. I I hate this shit. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man. Long story short, with the whole levels thing, it's it's based off grade your GPA. And right now, I have the honors GPA. And I literally needed 1A this semester to get high honors GPA, which I got that 1A. I got two A's, actually, which puts me well above the high honors. And they won't give it to me because they're taking last semester's GPA and not this one. La- okay, so distinction, last semester is meaning the semester previous to this one, not yes. your last semester attack. Yeah, yeah, correct. Yeah, okay. So I, I had a 3-3-3. Three, three, three. I now have like a, not officially, but I will have a like a 3-3-7, three, three, which puts me at that high honors, not just regular honors, but they will not give me those cords because oh, they're man. stubborn little mother. Anyways, I mean, um, I love <laughs> tech. I love no, place. Georgia Georgia Tech has a special place in everybody's hearts. Actually, one of my favorite things, so when I'm in store, um, I will bump into patrons of this store and they will be wearing Georgia Tech hats, like shirts or whatever. And sometimes I'll be wearing a Georgia Tech shirt or like, or won't. And I'll, I'll always go up to those people and say, Hey, go jackets, mm-hmm. you know, and they'll be like, sting them. Uh, or they'll come up to me when I'm wearing a Georgia Tech shirt and go, hey, you know, go jackets. What's the good word? What's the good word? Uh, to hell with Georgia. And um, sorry, Evans. And they always appreciate it. You know, yeah. it's like, it's that little twinkle in their eye. They're like, you know, this person comes from where I'm from. Because it, it, cause it's like everybody, and it's just a joke per se. Everyone's a Georgia fan. Not everyone's a Georgia Tech fan. The people that, you know, wear UGA stuff went to Walmart. The people that wear Georgia Tech stuff actually went to Georgia, went to Georgia Tech. Tech. Yeah. So like it, it's, there's not many of us out there because everybody's you, you, Let's just say fan. it this way. You can't be a Georgia Tech fan not having gone to Georgia Tech or you're mom or dad didn't go to tech yeah because we're ass why would you be our fan why would you be like, a fan of georgia you tech? shouldn't be a fan of georgia tech like we're not good at football we're not good at i mean basketball this year that's probably great they held acc up. championship fantastic i only know that because people tell me <laughs> i don't fall i don't fall sports as we very well know but yeah it, it's like you know people who come up to me and they're like go jackets i'm like okay you went to tech there was a lady the other day who was like oh did you go to tech and i'm like yeah she's like i graduated you know 1920 or you know whatever year she said that's really freaking old. back when i was a boy or woman back when i was a was a, wow. a little little girl little girl um but yeah she was like i graduated like 1970 you know class three or whatever and she 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 was like oh man i'd love to see you know georgia tech students out there repping it um and up to that point in our conversation me helping her in the store like i you know she I didn't know that she went to tech, but I was like treating her with kindness, like I do with like I say almost because some people are just idiots. Um, but every person who comes in, I try to treat them with kindness, and and she was like, man, I, I could tell she was appreciative of the help, 
And she was like, oh, did you go to tech? It was like that connection thing. Mm -hmm. I just, I've been in multiple conversations with people who had gone to tech and that whole experience, it's like a really tight knit community because everybody knows how hard it is, regardless of what major you're in, um, except for business. And, you know, everybody knows that like the crew of people who graduate from tech are, are a pretty high caliber crew of people. Um, even if I disagree with you, Hey, that's fine. Yeah. Think whatever you want. Yeah. Freedom of speech. You, you got it. You got it. Don't, See, co don't come after me, man. Like I, I'm very proud of tech. I'm very happy that, you know, I attended this. No, you're proud of tech it, or proud of you. I'm proud of me. Sure. You're proud of you. You did. It, it, you did it. it. You worked it, hard. It, I, I'm. I'm. I'm happy to tell people. Like I don't. I don't sit there. I'm not ashamed of being at tech. I'm not by any. Everyone just has their love hate relationship with tech. Like you sit there and you had great memories, but then also you just have that overcast shadow of stress from professors and tests. Yes. Yeah. You know. Maybe you. Just, you just had a much better experience at tech than I did. So. I did it differently than most people. You, you did. and you I did it super. Like, I came into tech. So I full-time dual enrolled at Kennesaw my senior year. Yeah. I think we've been over that. I came in with, you know, a bunch of credits. I came into tech not having to take any lab sciences. And most, most of those as a freshman or even a, a second year, like, they're weed-out classes. That's yeah. all they are. Is they're there to, like, literally kill your soul and, like, make you want to leave tech. And so I got to skip out on all of that. In my freshman year, I was in some business classes already, you know, because because once again, tech doesn't have the you have to be here for a year, then apply to the business school and then get into the business school. And then even then you could still not get into the business school. Yeah. Tech is you get into tech. You're in. What do you want to do? Exactly. No, I do like that because I kind of cheated the system getting into tech. What do you apply as? Uh, so I came from Kennesaw State and I applied. I couldn't do computer engineering because I needed one more class, which means one more semester at Kennesaw. And I didn't want to do that. So I applied as a civil engineer because I could, and I okay. had no interest in civil engineering ever in my entire life, but I applied, got in literally the first semester. You have to do one semester. If you transfer, you have to do at least one semester before you can switch majors. So really? my one semesters, I still had core classes I could take. So I just took core classes for every engineering and then I switched it over to computer. So I cheated the system That's a little bit. That's funny. That's funny. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, I, I didn't cheat the system. I kind of like in it inadvertently like got some pluses so like at you know in high school i was going to get you know x amount of ap classes but you know full-time dual enrolling every single one of those classes if you pass the class goes on your transcript as your high school transcript as if you passed the ap exam like with full Correct. full stars like five you got a five on the ap exam mm -hmm. so i got like 14 ap credits because i didn't know credit hours and i took like 14 classes over two semesters which is and it's free too big time yeah that, that's the best part free and free classes. and well they, they've nerfed it now so it's not as free anymore but i i took full advantage i got free books the free classes like all that stuff now granted i didn't get to have a senior year of high school right because i was at kennesaw full time so i went to back you know back to high school maybe like twice it's overrated anyway you know, I didn't get to, you know, throw the flower toss on game days and wear camo as a senior on Fridays. Mm. Whoa. Dang it. Oh, shucks. That would have been so much fun to do that and not get into Georgia Tech. Well, let, let's kind of talk about that real quick. We're going back to high school. The high school has your graduation. I, I know you wanted to mention this on the podcast. So let's talk about mindsets. Oh, yeah, let's that's true. Things that we're thinking about as we're going through middle school graduation, high school graduation, now college graduation. Like our, where are we in life? What are we thinking about? Cause I know me, I mean, middle school, obviously I'm not thinking the things I'm thinking now, high school, same thing. So uh, let, let's just start off with, let's just think middle school. When we had a little middle school graduation, you yeah. said you walked across stage. I walked from the middle school to the high school, like things that I was thinking. That's I was like, cute. Oh, I'm a big kid now. <laughs> well, that's okay. So it's funny you say that because when I was in, you know, what was it? So eighth grade, yeah. right? You're, you're, you finally made it to the top of the pile, mm -hmm. right? You're, you're the top of the heap. I'm the, I'm the big man on campus, right? So you went through sixth grade, went through hell. Seventh grade, went through hell. Eighth grade, made it through. Now you're at the top of the pile. But you're, you're, I don't know if you felt this moment, but there was like one moment where I was literally hit with the realization that I'm going to have to start it over again. Yes, Four more years of this shit. It's like four more years of what I just went through, mm -hmm. or I'm sorry, three more years of what I just went through, and then plus another extra year. Yes. And I have to start over, and I have to make new friends. Yeah, no. Except for a, Evans. I love you, Evans. It was very intimidating. 
but it, it it's I was very excited to get out of middle school because although I loved middle school, believe it or not, I was just ready to be like the, like a big kid or whatever. Right. Yeah. And honestly, my I think my favorite thing freshman year was like the first week of classes because. In middle school, whenever you like change classes, you like just stay in line and you walk to your next class. I thought it was the yeah. most badass thing that you would have different classes with different people, and like whenever the bell rang, you just walk through the hallway with everybody. Like you walk around, like you, yeah, right. You, you see the upper class when okay. girls. And, so where did you, know, you go to middle school again? Dean Rusk. Okay, which is no longer no longer exists. Okay. Yes. Dude, funny you say that. So I went to Fulton Science Academy Middle School, which, no. which it it does exist. Oh, okay, but it doesn't exist as it used to. So Same. It, Okay, Dean Rusk exists, but it's not called Dean Rusk anymore. Was it a charter? Or a magnet school? No. No. No, it was, it was a regular public. It was, no, yeah, it was a public okay. regular public. You went they, to public middle school? Public middle school. Dude, that blows. It was actually kind of fun. I enjoyed it. Public middle school is like it's just animals everywhere. I, I actually really enjoyed middle school. Middle school was yeah. my favorite. High school. Was it really? Man, yeah, middle school was awesome. Seventh grade sucked. Eighth grade was amazing because I made like the basketball team and it was like so cool to wear your like basketball gear on Friday or game days and you know well, all the ladies are exactly. like oh all the kids hey, showing up to the, the games guy. yeah it was, it was you felt like the shit especially you know when you yeah it was it was just great but um, Dean Rusk the building is still there they called it Sequoia East or whatever they had made it attach they attached it to the high school and they completely built Dean Rusk a new school. But it's like a two-story middle school. Oh, now. so they it's, went it's they went all out. Yes, it's ginormous now. So my old middle school, and I drive by it on the way to North Point Mall. Mm-hmm. Um, and you can look it up where it used to be, I think. Um, but it's like on the way to North Point Mall from Roswell, like across. And, you know, I, I literally can picture in my mind like all these different scenes from in the hallways of like shenanigans that we would get into. So like there was like a brick that was sticking out in the wall in the gym. And like you could wall run and grab it. And, like, I remember doing that, and everybody was like, oh, oh my gosh. Like, like, you Spider-Man. You're so cool. Like, I can't do that. And I was like, hey, well. <laughs> of course, like, the next jock would walk by and just grab it. Um, <laughs> I, was a little, I was a little kid. I was a little very small kid. And uh, not short. I was, I was pretty tall, but I, I was very thin. Uh-huh. Um, now I'm just average height, unfortunately. Um, sorry. <laughs> That's best. <laughs> you say average height. I'm, I'm taller than Noah, actually. No, I'm no, no. Mitchell, Mitchell's about the same height. Except, so we, uh, so sorry, this is a total tangent. Oh I just boy, thought here of we it. Go. So when we were at the bachelor weekend and we took a photo on the dock, I was standing on my toes because I didn't want to be the smallest person. I mean, Evans is like significantly taller than all of us. Yeah. So who? And so you were standing next to me. Great. So I looked at the photo. Dude, I honestly, hold on. Let me pull it up right freaking now because it made me laugh out loud because I was like, Mitchell's not that short. You know what I mean? Like you're, you're a pretty average height dude. And so to see this photo is like, like that's, that's a little strange because you, you came off as like this freaking midget <laughs> and no, it made me laugh boy. out loud. Cause I was like, that's not true. Like that's not real. Like Mitchell's tall. He's oh, close. There we go. Hold on. I'm trying to find it. Here it is. Look. Oh God. Yo, I look like this. Okay, no, 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 no. I'm the second shortest. Second shortest. I'll flash it on the screen right now. Dude. Oh, pepperoni nip. <laughs> Dude, that's, that's pretty bad. Yeah, I hate you. That, yeah, I'm so I, sorry I because you. you and I are almost the same height. And I made you look like. Yeah, a little bit. Like, like a little midget. Like, like three or four inches short. Anyways, all right. Okay, so I don't so want to think about it anymore. Back to middle school because yeah. those are more fond uh, mm-hmm. memories. Um, I just remember like so like uh, what was it? Fulton Science Academy. Um, I'm trying to think of the freaking name of my high school or middle school. Um, but I was there, and I just remember like it was the further away I get from it, the more positive memories I remember. Like I don't think of any of those negative memories. Like I got sus- uh, in school suspension at one point, and like all this stuff, and so I was like. I don't know. I just it it just gets like more golden in my mind, like more sage. It's like aged yeah. wine, kind of. Do you, hate, you don't get that way, do you? No, I don't. you've already said you don't. No, like, are you sentimental at all? I'm very sentimental. I just you can't be positive about something that was negative. Correct. I'm very. What is it? Um, do you learn lessons from things that are negative? Oh, I do. Very. Like, I think that. Yes, I learned the lessons. 
So but doesn't like, that I sit back and I just I said like that was just such a painful lesson. Like I'm glad I did it, and like I'm I'm happy I learned from it. But like I don't sit back and be like, ah, oh, I'm optimistic. You know, I, I'm very pessimistic when it comes to bad things that happened to me in my life. Okay, more so it's, because when that happens, like I feel like you can look back and like at least be positive about it. You know, like I learned a lesson, and then like the more time that goes on, like the more your heart kind of softens to the positive memories of that experience. Like I remember getting completely like rush tackled on a basketball court and like crushed by one of the biggest guys in the class and going to the principal's office and like the nurse's office and all this stuff. And all I think about now is like, man, like that was just a really fun experience. Like, I don't know. Like I just can't be negative about it. Oh, for me, I look back and like, hmm. Reminds me never get in front of a big dude and ever again in my yeah. life. That well, I mean, no, that's a, that's a good lesson, but I, yeah. I just don't like, I don't think of those memories as memories that I wouldn't want to have again. I just think of those memories as like, man, like what, what a simpler time. I agree. I, when I look back, I think of a simpler back in the day, elementary school, middle school, what, what was the worst thing you had to worry about? You know, your RuneScape account getting hacked? Dude, listen, I was such a sheltered little kid. Like I had no idea what any of that stuff was. Like RuneScape? No, I, had, uh, I don't Wizard know. Wizard 101? No. Webkins. I didn't. Uh, I, I think my, my sister might have had Webkins, but like, no, you no. You didn't play any online games at all? War, uh, World of Warcraft? No, the only online game I played, I don't know if it was middle school, might have been high school. It was called Pop Tropica. Do you remember that game? You didn't even play Club Penguin? No, no. Club what Penguin. in the. F- even Ellie, I think, played Club you Penguin. You played what? Zootopia? What? Pop Tropica. Pop Tropica. It was, was epic. Pop Tart game? No, it was like a, it was like a uh, side-to-side game. That like like a two D Mario kind of game, but it was like a character adventure game. So you had to go find things in this world, and like it was like a puzzle game. It was like Pajama Sam or like like what? I, oh, like that's what like I played. Like a computer game. It yeah. wasn't online. No, it was online. Oh, okay, but, but it, was it wasn't like, like in a chat room. It was like a it was like a a directed game. So it was like a um, it was like a mini, campaign mode. It was like a thing. mini clip game, but it wasn't a mini clip game. It was like more than that. It was, was there like, anyone else that could play with you at the same time? No, I don't think it was. Okay, a, so it was like story mode. Like, like you, you exactly, to, you can complete. It the was game. online campaign. Gotcha. Okay, that sounds so much more mature for what it was. No, it was online like online campaign story mode. Cool guy. It, I think it was yeah. like a PBS, like oh, God, sponsored game. Sp- Speaking of sponsored, you wanna. Yeah, we, uh, we'll, we'll kick you right over to our sponsor. Good call, my yeah, friend. Nice segue. Um, I appreciate that, it. That was good. Uh, we don't have segues, but we'll throw you a segue um, and see you uh, in the halftime show where hopefully we can, we can bring it home. What's up, everybody, and welcome to this halftime mini man card episode inside of the main man card episode. Um, we are here, uh, and, and, and guess what? Guess what? Guess what Friday is? Do you know what Friday is? Um, the ninth, the seventh, the the seventh. No, it's graduation. Oh shoot! You're right. You said Friday, dude. We, oh, you done fucked up. Saturday. Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the halftime show where we just fuck it all up. It's okay. Saturday graduation. Also, you might have noticed that I no longer have my cap and gown on and put on a hat because I was sweating. Bullets. He's super nervous, super nervous. Bro. Yeah, super nervy. But anyway, we have a new sponsor this week. Yes, we do. A brand new sponsor, one never seen on the show before. Mitchell, do you want to tell us who it is? It is Tin. I mean, mancardpodcast.com. <laughs> I didn't know you were going to go that direction with it. Uh, you brought it up. Yeah, I did. I did. Well, for other tangential reasons that we will figure out the week after this episode airs, hopefully. Possibly. We'll see. Hey, this is a little episode inside of an episode. Do you yeah. want to drop a little teaser about a future episode? Just a, just a what teaser do you little want? Little taste. Well, I mean, just a little not like, tender hinge, but that's it. That's no, all. no, no. Well, ten, yeah, tinge. So, so the hint is hinge, and another hint is yeah. I gotta give another one. Yeah, just one, just a taste, dude. Come oh, on, boy. What's a good one? Hmm. That we've kind of so hinge and. Oh, boy, Auburn? I don't know. Hinge and Auburn, baby. Hinge and Auburn. That's all you got. That's Those are going to come together it. the week after this episode airs. So if you're listening to it right now, next Monday, we've got oh, a... Oh, hold up, hold up. I'm oh. sorry. I'm going to give a better hint. Oh, better It's hint? actually not... It's not going to help y'all, but it'll help later on. You'll understand. <clears throat> Nine divided by two, what is it? Off the top of your head. Four and a half. All right, y'all remember that for next time. 
Four and a half. Four and a half. Okay. Hey, I went to tech, dude. <laughs> Woo! Oh, God. I was about shit. Sorry, <laughs> Sorry, audience. Jeez. All right, anyways. Thank you for tuning into this episode. You sorry, no, take no, it, no, dude. No, no, I was gonna say thank you for tuning in. I was gonna say that exactly. No, no, you take it. I want you to do. Thank it. you for tuning into this <laughs> halftime episode, sponsored by mancardpodcast.com. dot com. And we hope you uh, enjoyed our little foreshadowing for the future. Let's get back into the episode and talk about graduation. Graduation. See you on the other side. To be honest, you, I, I don't know what just happened. Yeah, that was it, weird. It was, a, it was a little, I don't know. You changed, which you look great, by the way. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah. I hope you mean that in the, I look better now than what I was wearing before. Um, um, but I appreciate it. You're a little less overwhelming to look at. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, if you had actually gotten your stuff in on time. Oh, yeah. I'd be in it. Too. You would be in it fully. 100%. I would have even shared some of my stuff I with you. I really hope you would because it, it would look like I was a... Idiot. I like would have I just, given you my pin that you couldn't even see that I'll was underneath it. all of it. Honestly, I'd just throw, I'd throw like that towel over my something and I'd just make an, this is from me being in club, winning intramural basketball. Do it. Dude, that's good. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Because that's, that's actually a pretty big claim to fame. Okay, so here, so over your college experience, we've kind of talked about, you know, grades and, you know, memories through graduations and whatnot, being top of the pile, bottom of the pile, back to top of the pile, back to bottom of the pile. What is your kind of claim to fame through all of your school career? Like, what's what's your thing that when you look back, you're like, I did that shit. Like, that was my that was my thing. I'm going to be honest with basketball and murals. Three championships in a row. That is my thing. Basketball and Wolf, murals. <laughs> wolves of Ball Street. <laughs> the Wolves of Ball Street. It's a dynasty. Unfortunately, we couldn't make it a four-peat uh, this coming year because of COVID. But, you know. But let you me, won. Me you won every single year you played. Yes, every single year I played intramural basketball. We won. We have lost a total of one game in the whole entire like my time being here at Tech. That's I've incredible. Lost one intramural basketball game. You and I have never played basketball together. There might be a reason. Possibly, I don't know. Uh, he's just scared of me. He's scared of my that, skill. That's actually, I'm a little terrified. <laughs> I'm a little you, terrified. you shouldn't be. You shouldn't be. I'm horrible. I'm horrible. I say horrible. I'm going to get out there and just drain some J.J. Redick threes. But, like, I'm, did I'm you see that? Did you yeah, see that, that reference? That basketball reference. That's a deep, that's a deep cut, deep that is, reference. And that's not just a common – I mean, that's a decent player, but it's not very – if you said something like Michael Jordan, be like, oh, yeah, of course you know J.J. Redick. That's nice. J.J. Redick, yeah, dude. You know, a little prop Shoot, there. I think the best part about winning the, all the intramural stuff and, like, basketball stuff is because me and, like, my best friend did it together. And we, we go on the court. We do not look like some dudes that should – kick your ass in basketball we look like some dudes you look like you walk, stepped out of a gq photo shoot exactly we look or like you do we look like we're there to sell girl scout cookies it's like is what <laughs> is what it looks like he comes he comes on his little skirt and he you know yeah. gives you the little pitch he's like hey i'm here um we've got uh tree foils and we've got um tag alongs thin mints um but i already ate all of those <laughs> So after the game, if you want to buy some, just let me know. Please, yeah. please, twiddle in the hair. But no, that that's my claim to fame. What's your claim to fame? What, um, what would you say? Golly. So Parker mentioned it. I don't I don't know if he mentioned it on the dock or in the man card after dark episode. But when I was going around campus, it, it was on the dock. So I don't think people know this. So freshman year, I uh, had had come off of like a, a Christian retreat, right? And on that retreat, there were like bandanas or whatever. So I, I'm a, you know, I'm a pretty sentimental person. So I kept three, three of the bandanas from this like scavenger hunt thing, mm-hmm. right? And I kept them for quite a while. And I had them tied to my backpack, all three, all three of them. And so one of them was kind of tucked in, but the other two were kind of like loose. And so I rode my bike around everywhere freshman year of college, um, at least freshman and sophomore, like everywhere. And so when I was riding around. What I obviously I can't see myself riding a bicycle, so everybody around campus started to know me as the bandana kid. Because they were flapping the wind. Because they would just just flutter behind me, and I, of course I'm like listening to my headphones. I'm like freaking riding my bike, and then everybody's like, "Oh, there goes that idiot bandana kid again." Um, so that's kind of my campus claim to fame. Um, if you asked anybody who was in my year, or at least summer freshman and freshman year. Who was Bandana Boy? They'd be like, "Oh, it's that, it's that freaking kid that I hate." <laughs> <laughs> it's that kid. Probably not wrong. It's that Noah kid. Yeah, because I was like, I don't know. I, 
it's not really a claim to fame. It's kind of a joke. Um, but they knew me. They knew me as this bandana kid. I ended up taking them off after I freaking learned that I looked like an idiot with them on. Not like, I'm self, not like I'm self-conscious or anything, but I'm self-conscious. Um, no, I'm just kidding. I'm really not. I'm not insecure. I'm just the, don't look at me. <laughs> don't look at me, please. Oh, my gosh. Well, so, so college. College. Pain, you know, you know, you know what I like more what? than all this apartment behind me? What? College, college, not knowledge. College, college. Dude, we're just gonna we're gonna over we're gonna abuse that, that joke for a while. That's unfortunate. So let's 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 let's. Okay, <clears throat> try again. Let's go back to we did middle school. Let's go yeah. high school mindset. Oh, high no. school graduation. Yeah, I know you loved high school. High school graduation. What are you thinking? What what's going through the mind aside from the fact that I finally finished these four years? I'm on to another four. Years, four more years, exactly four more years mm-hmm. of death. Um, no, I, you know what, I remember when I was in high school, uh, I went through a lot of growing. Let's just say that. So, like, freshman, sophomore years were kick ass, you know, made a lot of friends. Um, I could kind of bounce between crowds of different people and not really sound an alarm of any group, like, why the hell is this person coming here? Um, so I, I would really have no group that I would go talk to in the morning, I would just kind of like go see people and then I'd go see their people and then go see the people of the, you know, just go see everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, very social butterfly kind of guy. Um, and of course, fresh, freshman year, I'll, I don't know if it was every year. I think there was one year we didn't have it together, but it was first period. Evans and I had Latin together. So that was always, that was the rock of my life was that first period Latin, which was just great. It was either first or second period. Um, but I just remember those it, so stressful. Like, do you, do you, like, think back on your high school experience and it was just like a, uh, like, it was just so much more intense. Like, it was like a pressure cooker of just social interaction, drama. Like, everything was just so intense. No. Really? But high school is such a breeze to me. I just, I hated it because, I, I mean, I feel like everyone, a lot of people are fake. I just feel like I was kind of trapped in high school in terms of, like, this is just not, this isn't, I know my, I know the rest of my life is just going to be so much better than this. Like, I just cannot wait to get out. I know. Cannot I was the out. same way. I mean, so much so that I skipped my senior year, but I, you know, I went a little girl crazy for a, at least a strong oh, minute there. I wasn't, I was locked and loaded into my relationship. So yeah, I, I, that I, was, I didn't get, I think that was, that saved me. It really yeah. did save me because also right around the time that like I started dating said ex that we talk about on every fucking show. Um, Hi, if you want to come on the show, please do. <laughs> yeah, just don't tell me. I'll just show she, up. She doesn't like, listen surprise. anymore. She stopped listening because I think she's realized this is like way too cringy for her to listen to. Maybe. Yeah, we hope. Um, but I think that saved me because right before we started dating, I started like going like experimenting with drugs Experim- and- you know, yeah, sure. <laughs> Talking to different girls. I even literally like right before I started dating her, I went like we were. T- I was talking to her, but I was also talking to this other girl, upperclassman, and we went to the carnival. And like I ended up kissing this other girl, and she found out. Like literally, like I was just I was kind of making my ways through, you know, figuring out what I want. Yeah, it was a, little, it was a great start to our relationship. And wait, you cheated? No, we weren't dating. We oh, weren't dating. Man, I was about to. Fuck it. <laughs> I gotcha. Damn. Anyway, but um, I think that's what saved me because I'm telling you, I was going down a path that could have easily led to something. That I, I just can't even imagine. So, yeah, I can tell you, it did. It didn't pan out. It doesn't pan out. Yeah, it's just not worth it. Well, I could have been stuck with an unwanted present. When you're when you're trying to find out who you are as a person, it's not recommended, from my view, to be trying to learn somebody else at the same time. <laughs> not good advice. It's just like when you don't know who you are, why would you waste all of your energy? trying to not only figure out who you are, but also like date this other person. Like that just doesn't make any sense. I look back. I kind of agree with you. I mean, I don't read. Do you feel like you wasted all those? Oh my gosh, I'm punching this table. Do you, do you feel like you wasted those years? I don't think I wasted those years. I think later on I wasted years. I don't, I think what was a five year relationship should have been at max, like two, maybe three. I think whenever our hindsight, it should have been zero. I mean, technically, yes. In hindsight, it should have been zero, but it taught me a couple of things. It taught me how to be you, in a long-term relationship, frankly. Okay. And you were uh, both just too pretty. Sure. 
You know what I mean? Like sure, you're just I don't too, I don't believe that at all. Pretty sure. pretty people like Ellie's beautiful, right? Yes. I'm not. So it works, right? So she sees me for like I'm a fun like I'm a fun guy kind of thing. And I you know, she's obviously like beautiful. And mm-hmm. so like you know, you have that dichotomy. Did you are you're and, not an ugly guy by any means. No, no, no. Not ugly, but like you know, you're, if, you're, you're, if you line me with that's you, a lie. that's a lie. And we that's walk a into a bar, that's a lie. And and we lie. were both single. It's a lie. You would be walking out with two girls on your arm. My, you would be walking out with my girl on your arm and it's another girl. It's totally a lie. No, it's not a lie. The girl, I, you got to I'm the guy. Ass. I'm. <laughs> girls love that. <laughs> Listen, I'm not wearing my gray sweatpants to the bar. Well, you could. Uh, okay, maybe I will. Maybe that'll steal them. I mean, you might take a couple guys and girls home with you. you just okay, that was my thing. I've been hit on a couple times by guys in bars, and it oh, always right. makes me crack up. Not oh, in bars, yeah. but I was I was working an event. I don't know why I said bars. I hate bars. But I was working an event. Like, I, I did photography, right? Mm-hmm. And I was doing this photo shoot for uh, Martha. Do you remember Martha? Mm. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, I do. Yeah, she's the sweetest girl. Yes. Right? And so she she got me to come in and do a photo shoot for her, like, parent her dad i think her mom and dad might have worked at the same place i can't remember but her mom's like work so they had like an office party like christmas office party and so they had me come out do photos and they had a dj there and come to find out dj super gay okay didn't know that also don't care so i had dressed up right like oh you've told me this story yeah yeah yeah. yeah, it's a good story it is a good story go on so so i got dressed up right you know because i'm like you know, I'm shooting this event. Like, I'm not going to show up in sweatpants and t-shirt. So I got, you know, my nice little gray suit. And, like, I don't I don't look overdressed, but I look nice. Didn't wear a tie. You know, dress it down a little bit. And I show up. And I'm working. So I'm not, like, hanging out with the people. So who's the only other person I can talk to who's also working? The DJ. DJ d Right. Right. So I go in there and I start talking to this guy. And after the, I don't know, second or third time I was talking to him and then go off and take photos and come back and talk to him. He, he went, he was like, Hey, like you're gay, right? But he didn't sound like that. He was like, he was like, you're, you're gay, right? And I was like, no, he was like, come on. You don't have to lie to me. <laughs> like guys, straight guys don't dress this good. Oh, and then it's, that, a, it's a, it's a compliment though. But it was like a backhanded compliment. Cause I'm not like, really, I'm like, F you dude. What do you mean? Straight guys can't dress good. Yes. It's a backhand. I, I take it. I'd be like. Flattered. I mean, granted, like I appreciate, strongly appreciate that yeah. I look good, but at the same time, I'm like, like who 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 put you in charge of these? I'm gonna be fashion I'm roles. gonna be 100 percent honest with you. If you get a compliment from, you know, someone who is gay that says you dress nice or that you are attractive, I take that as a fully agree. I, I we already talked about this. I take that as a much hot. I I take that more personal. I, I think that's a better compliment coming from someone. Of that caliber than just, you know, any old girl. Were you just exasperated at me for agreeing with you before you finished your sentence? A little bit, yeah. You kind of threw me off. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I, I thought you were I thought you were like oh, like agreeing with your own sentiment before you said it. But nope. then I realized no. that I cut you off. I apologize. No, you're look fine. At, look at this. Owning our mistakes. I listen, I know I talk a lot. Here, here, look, look, I I won't say anything for the next thirty seconds. Shit. What do I talk about? All right. Um <clears throat> anyways. What were we talking about? We'll go back to uh, a time that I was, you know, hit on at a bar. And then same thing. You can say at least, hell, yeah. Like, you know, like, okay, cool. Anyway, it was in Savannah. And same thing. It was, uh, I was wearing a Mamba t-shirt for Kobe Bryant, who passed away, you know, rip, rest yearly. And uh, I was just standing in line, and he came up to me. And he was like, Mamba. I was like, yeah. He's like. I started like licking his lips. I was like, mm, nope. Does not this, what I meant. Is this going where I think it's going? No, not what I meant. Uh, anyway, uh, he, he, I'm like I said, I don't care what your sexuality is. Who ca- I don't care whatsoever. I'll treat you respectfully like a human being. Cause you are, it's do just, I, do I have opinions? Yeah, sure. Yeah. I'm not going to say those though. But so like he's, he's talking to me. We're having a good conversation. Perfectly fine. My friends, that I'm with obviously can catch on to the situation, you know, just guy humor, or whatever, stupid guy humor that, you know, they're nudging me, laughing, whatever. It's stupid because guys are stupid. Anyway, we're having this conversation and basically, yeah, yeah. um, the per- like he goes to like grab my- he's going around and like grabbing guys' hands and kissing them on the hand. And I see this and he like comes to me and he's like, put, he like 
asked me to put my hand out. I almost knocked that water over. And instead of doing so, I was like, nah, dude, high five. I gave him a high five, walked away. That's my little story. I just figured I'd, I'd fill up the 30 seconds or plus with that. You just straight rejected a guy who was kissing everybody in a bar. How, that, does that make you feel special or, or not good at all? It just made me feel like I didn't want to get kissed that night. You were, you, I didn't get you kissed just by re- anybody. Actually, so it, should, cool. it, should, it should make you feel good because you rejected the skank at the bar that night. Sure. It's like the person, whoever it was, guy or girl, doesn't matter, but like going around kissing everybody in the bar and you're like, yeah, you know what? You know, I'm good. Frankly, it would have been the most action I got for a while. So, Also, just want to let you know that 30 seconds was very difficult. That was a very difficult 30 seconds. I agree. Okay, oh, good. for you. No, Did oh, not speak? Well, for, uh, apparently for you too. Yeah, no kidding. I, I've kind of like, I feed off your little conversations. So. Can we hear our shots? Yeah, see. <laughs> he makes me, makes me nervous. All right. No, I don't. I'm not an intimidating, am I intimidating of a guy? No, I don't think so. Do I like, I'm you not know imposing. And you know what's freaking weird? My sisters have said, I, have I told you this? That recently? No. M- multiple. I'm nervous. A lot of females have recently been telling me. Oh, that, that's like, right. I'm intimidating looking and I don't get it. I don't get it. Cause I look in the mirror. I'm like, you, you little nerd ass. Yes. Your attractiveness is very that intimidating. That's not it. That's not what, that's not your, what they say. Sister- they, they say I have a, a resting bitch face, but like, well, you, that's the thing. You need to go back to the 1800s so you can like marry your sisters because listen, they just totally came on to you for sure. Oh yeah. 100%. They're like, dude, you're smoking hot. Like wish we weren't brother and sister. Yeah. Hey, hey, dun, hey, dun, step dun, bro. Dun, dun. Stop. Yeah. What are you doing? <laughs> Sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh, I couldn't boy. help myself. They they basically say because they've worked out with me at the gym. They're like, dude, you're at the gym because I used to be uh, well, not upset, but I'd be like, how do you approach a girl in the gym, or like why doesn't a girl approach a guy in the gym? Because and, they're all sex addicts. Sure, that that. Or well, actually, fact- I'm sorry. Your your record with girls in the gym is 100 percent for that. I didn't meet her in the gym though. Oh, that's true. Yeah, okay, she, fine. She, she was just a gym rat. She, okay, fine. Gym rat. Yeah. You're a, you're one for one. Sure. But if I, I like my sister was like, it's because you look like you don't want anybody to even look at you. You look so pissed off all the time at the gym. You look like you are not happy. How are you supposed to look? You're grinding on I know, freaking I gonna, hitting I, some PRs. Like, yeah, I'm gonna be on. <laughs> I'm gonna do curls, smiling. <laughs> you're gonna no. be you're gonna be hitting top set bench. I'm sorry, top set squat, and you're just like. <laughs> It doesn't tickle. It's dainty, ladies. Uh, like you're busting blood vessels in your neck, just like, uh, dude. I literally, so I was squatting today, like I, I do I did every too, day. Earlier today. Oh well, you know, a stop clock is right twice a day, right? You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> you're not wrong. So I, I squat every day. Um, once you get to that club, yeah, it's okay. I'll let you know. We can I'm, talk. I'm at to like every. Every other, every two days. So what, so I felt really good in the gym today. Obviously this is not, this doesn't have anything to do with graduation yourself, yeah. other gotcha. than the fact that I really started working out in college. And so that, that kind of grew through that experience. But the, the gym in my apartment, which is actually where we are now, um, it only has a Smith machine. There's no free Oh, you rack. didn't actually lift in then. Well, well that's the thing because I, I compensate for the weight that's missing. So it's it's only thirty five pound bar instead of a forty five pound bar. So I compensate and add that weight Plus back on. Plus all the weight, all the extra muscles that yes, help correct. balance the weight. Yeah. Yeah. So there's no there's no weight balancing. But here's the problem. Here's the problem. I can squat more, not here. Right. I'm today. I squatted for five sets of five. Uh two hundred and twenty five pounds. Nice. Right. That's two plates. That's yeah. two plates. But the problem is. Oh, sorry. Car in the background. If you can hear that. Um, welcome, welcome to Atlanta. I sound like a moaning. That sounds scary. Yeah, yeah. They they drive by all the time. But I was hitting five sets five, two twenty five, right? And and I was upset because like if you can do something for five sets of five, you can do more weight, right? Correct. So because I I was at my house like three three and a half weeks ago, and I was squatting like two forty, two forty five. Like I was going up. But then I went away from free weights to the Smith machine and I physically can't put enough weights on the bar because they don't have more than one 45 pound plate on the stupid Smith machine. Mm. So I have to go 45, 25, 10, 10, 5. And I'm like, this is so stupid. And it's literally like, it's a Smith machine. So I don't have to worry about the weight falling off the bar. Mm -hmm. So there's no clips. I'm like, it's literally like I have a photo. You're just gonna. It's hilarious. You're gonna up your reps. I I mean, that's really the only 
solution. Well, at this point, I've finally maxed it out today, but look how close it is. Oh, yeah. Is that all the weights that you can put on it, too? Yeah. You got like a centimeter. I mean, look at that. For those of you that don't see it, he's got like a center. He's got about, a, you know. I'll put it on the screen. Yeah. About a softy worth of uh, space left. I mean, it's barely. But I'm like, go to YouTube, by the way, just so you can see that. Um, but it's it's tiny little space left. But like, what's frustrating is all of that weight is just another 45-pound plate. Oh, you're right. Yeah. And that's all it is. And it pisses me off so hard because I could I could do more. It's actually more than a 45-pound plate. Well, it plate, technically yes. is, but the bar's still. Oh, that's pounds. right. You're right. You're right. It's oh. just another 45-pound plate. So I'm like, oh. Oh. It sounds like I nut myself. Sorry. <laughs> oh, it's a 45-pound plate. But anyway, back to college. I totally went off. Yeah, on we went on a I, large I, tangent. I Welcome know. back. Welcome back. We're Welcome back to my card. Yeah, get back in. Sorry. Um, let's let's just end it. Let's let's talk about how we're feeling about now with graduation. How do we feel about to walk across that stage? You've been graduated, so you're in the real life. So let, let, let's just kind of like talk about the ceremony itself. How are we feeling? I, so from we'll do my perspective, and then we'll do go your right perspective. Ahead, yeah. So not like I have to go first every time, um, but I do. Yeah. No, we know. So. <laughs> So graduating to me uh, at this point is stupid. It's just pointless, right? It doesn't mean anything. I'm walking across the stage. doesn't mean anything. It's, it's for mommy to take it's, photos. It's for mom and dad to, you know, get their son pictures. Yay, you did it. Congrats. And so it's more performative for them, which gives me a lot of satisfaction. So it's not for nothing. It gives me a lot of satisfaction to see them happy and enjoy the fact that, like, I got to have a really good experience at Tech get through well my dad didn't have a good experience when he was there so he got to live kind of vicariously through me so like all of that culminates into like okay this walk across the stage is gonna be nice it's gonna be worth it um but thinking back like you know the dog pile kind of mentality when it, it let's just say if i had walked last spring just theoretically i think i would have been a little bit more overwhelmed just because i didn't have a job when i graduated gotcha I'll admit that's one thing that I've, I'm very glad because I'd be stressing about that too. That like I went through this whole entire year knowing like when I graduate, as I just have to graduate and then I can start my full time position. Because you've already accepted your you, full, you accepted your full time last year. Yes. Yeah. So you were set. Yeah. Regardless. Regardless. The the only thing that was up in the air was location. And so, now is it confirmed? It no. When do you? What is what I is this know, job, it's, dude? It's it's. it's Listen, I, you already told me off camera all of the dichotomy with it. Yes. But you can be real. The balance between going there and you kind of like wanting to stay here but are totally willing to go there, have you not heard anything from them? No, I had a meeting with my recruiter about two weeks ago. Basically, long story short, they sent out a survey. They said, hey, do you want to stay working remote? Do you want to be hybrid or do you want to go full time back in the office? They sent it out to all the employees that are working there now. He told me about this. He literally said the day that they sent it out was the day that I had this conversation with him. He's like, you know what? Let me see what the, you know, the turnout is. Let's see what the company comes to. He thinks it's either going to be hybrid or remote, meaning hybrid. Like you go to the office three days a week and then remote two days a week. So like Monday, Friday hybrid. Or so, but home. either option you'd have to move to California. Yeah. I mean, and I'm like, sorry, there's three options. Two of them you'd have to move to California. Yes. He doesn't see the full time one happening for another like three or four years. Okay. But basically long story short is, he would let me know that. I've also heard other things from my best friend that works there that saying that they're giving people up to a year to move, like come back into the office. As soon as the office uh-huh. opens full capacity again, they, they, they were talking, you get one year. If you want to work remote for that one year, you can, which I'm really hoping they at least give me that option because I would love to at least try working remote one year. Right. Because yeah. ultimately, I would love to stay here. All my friends and family are here. I would like to be here and work remotely because that's, that's all I've known. Going across the country, I'm open to it. I'm going to go wherever the job needs me to go because it's a great position, great salary, everything. Wait, is it it's really? Just, yes. Yeah, it, it's nice. It's it's a pretty it's a it's it'll fit my needs in a little bit. Hey, I have my needs met too. Okay, I'm don't, sure. No. Don't think I'm no pauper. Hey, hey, you got the love life going on. So yeah, that's that's I'm definitely winning in that department. You 100 percent are. So that, not, that's not, not, what, it's not a competition. Life is not a competition, people. But I'm winning. But um, he is winning. <laughs> He's winning in the physical department, the job department, and the freedom department. Freedom department. As of right now. So. No, no, actually. <laughs> he admitted, Ellie. Nope. He's got, if he cries at the altar, it's because he's losing his freedom. Not no, because, we, I'm just no, kidding. okay. Ellie, we just are going apologize. to revisit that freedom argument next week. Oh, oh, that's, that's a, okay. If you're watching right now, I want you to come on this show, mm. okay? And I want you to freaking, 
put this man on a hot seat because he just blasted you to oblivion right now. Freedom. Look at me. Free. I've got freedom. Uh, that's, I'm Mitchell. That's not what I meant. I've got freedom. I didn't <laughs> say. I, I'm just saying. I'm beating. I'm winning the freedom department. Meaning you are about. You are about to eat. chained. Chained. Dude, I'm already chained. But I was more. chained to the second I went on my knee. Well, now legally you will be chained. Yeah, that's true. We're actually getting our marriage license on Friday. Ooh, congratulations, marriage license. You know. So can you drive like the marriage mobile? The. <laughs> Yeah, drive it, drive it. Um, hopefully not off a cliff, <laughs> just straight into the the gully. But anyway, let's just let's end this podcast because yeah, we can Noah actually drives that off the cliff yeah. into the next episode. Whee! Yeah, so we will see you next week when hopefully we get a special guest on this. I'm actually so excited about this. <laughs> so I have not met this person. I do not know this person. I have seen very few photos of this person because I do not have social media. But I'm so excited to meet you. You know who you are. And I hope that the audience out there will be excited to meet her too. So um, you want to send them away with some some love, Mitchell? So, uh, <clears throat> thank you for joining us on this very important episode. We hope you join us next week for our lovely uh, 9 divided by 2 conversation. You will get that answer then. It is a great story. We'll see you next week. And uh, I'll be on the lovely hot seat. And Noah will be crashed in, crashing the marriage mobile. So. Yep, we will see you uh, next Monday. Have a good weekend. Hasta luego.